Welcome to the Natural Training Center Radio Show, where Coach Helder Gomes and Frank Zong bring your survival talk to get and keep you prepared. Welcome to Natural Training Center Radio. I'm Helder Gomes, and today we will be discussing firearms and our Second Amendment. Now, I've never been a gun nut, nor do I claim to be one now. Uh, my firearms and other weapons, those are my tools, and uh, someone's going to be very hard-pressed to uh, try to take them away from me. Um, just like any other tools, I have uh, drills, I have uh, my Harley-Davidson, and uh, a bunch of uh, tools in my toolkit, right? Whenever I need them to perform a job, whether it's around the house, uh, whether it's at our headquarters, or whatever the case may be, I go and retrieve that tool and put it to use. And my farms were never thought of, uh, by me at least, uh, for any other purpose, right? Um, they're there if I need it. I need if I need it for self-defense, it's there for self-defense. If I need it because I want to go shoot uh, and go to the range with my wife or with friends or other natural training center members, I go and retrieve my tools. And uh, that's always what they've been, uh, even as an instructor, you know, and a firearms instructor and their tools for the job to teach somebody else this, uh, you know, pretty cool means of self-defense, right, as an American that uh, myself and and, and other uh, veterans fought for and are currently fighting for. And uh, it's something that uh, is just ours. So all of a sudden now when I see all of this uh, stuff on the news, and especially with the political campaigns that are going on, and seeing these, these rights jeopardized, all of a sudden, of course, it's something that starts to take more of a precedence because it's kind of like, listen, you know, when the hands were off, you know, no big deal. It was just another tool. Now, all of a sudden, you want to take this away from me. Now you're going to really make that part of me uh, much more emphasized, right? And then all of a sudden, we all fall under the gun nut, you know, or the gun freaks or whatever the case may be, you know, and that's just more propaganda for, you know what, you're making me this way because you're, you're trying to, 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 to fight the lion. You know, you know, just been been asleep and been quiet this whole time. I would never say asleep, but always quiet, you know, always in a bush, you know, doing their thing and just living the lifestyle, not bothering anybody, you know, unless they, they bother me. And all of a sudden now it's just like, oh, guess what? You know, now you can't be there because now we're going to just, you know, take little stabs at you, you know, for to take something away that that's important to you. And they can't understand why we are reacting the way that we are reacting, which is just like, you know, you're, you're out of your freaking mind. Um, and people are getting tattoos and, and, uh, you know, and all sorts of stuff that they probably would have never done, you know, a a few years ago. But, um, you know, also when you have a president that, uh, that states that, you know, one of his biggest, uh, uh, failures or regrets, uh, during his presidency was not to enact more gun control. You know, that right there is like, come on, man, really? You know, you're just really, you know, I I don't know, adding fuel to the fire, which, you know, makes no sense to me. And, uh, you know, just like everything else, you know, it's just like it's all great, you know, because everybody, you know, all the politicians, you know, including the president are protected by uh, very well trained and uh, heavily armed personnel. But I guess my family, you know, they don't have the right to that, you know, no matter what the government, government, government had us do in the past. And, you know, we're on every sucker list, list as veterans and all that other stuff. But I can't have the right uh, to protect myself uh, for whatever the reason is. But uh, let me just tell you a little story um, about uh, an operation in an, uh, in an unnamed place uh, that I went on as a uh, as a U.S. Marine. And uh, this story really stuck in my head uh, or really stuck in my mind. Uh, almost every day I revisit it because there was just so much uh, emotion involved involved in the whole thing. So anyway, we got sent on this operation, and not to fill in details or not to bore you, I uh, arrive at this house myself and, and uh, some fellow Marines. And, uh, you know, we get inside, and here's a father on the ground uh, cuddled up with uh, four females. Uh, turned out the one was his wife, and three of them were his daughters. And he's bawling. I mean, he's crying and, and, and all this other stuff. And he spoke some, some broken English, but we definitely had a, an interpreter with us also. And uh, basically what was happening was he was uh, so happy. You know, so these were actually tears of joy. You know, I certainly couldn't tell the difference. And, uh, you know, he was just kind of explaining how, you know, and talking about his, his rifle and how his, his hunting rifle and, or, or weapon or gun, you know, I'm not sure if it was a rifle or a shotgun, but he uh, was uh, 
trying to explain to the interpreter to explain to us how his guns got taken away and they got confiscated not that long ago and what ended up happening is right before we were in there i guess the bad guys were in there and here's his father terrified you know what's what's going to happen he can't protect he can't do anything you know the bad guys have the guns he has nothing because he just got them taken away from him and here he is with with four females and you know imagine or what he was trying to explain to us is imagine what was going to incur, you know, and me watching, you know, this whole thing happening to my daughters and to my wife if, you know, you guys didn't come here with your weapons. So after so many different uh, uh, conversations, let's say, uh, that were happening in, in this relatively, you know, short period of you know, five, ten minutes or whatever, the one thing that I realized as a young, you know, green boot Marine was that. You know, this guy wasn't happy at all to see us. I mean, yeah, he was happy to see us, but he was more happy to see my M16, you know, because that's what was taken away from him. And he knew that was exactly what was needed to be able to protect his family and stop the bad guys from doing things that he would have never been able to, to live with himself if he had witnessed. And uh, on that note, uh, we'll be right back. Are you in shape to respond to emergencies, save your family, or achieve daily missions and tasks without getting burnt out? Learn the most efficient and effective fitness program that's out there. This method is used by elite combat warriors, both in the U.S. and internationally, and it is being brought out to the public for you. Visit areyoufittosurvive.com and take advantage of this limited time offer by downloading this program for a discount. Okay, so continuing with uh, our uh, episode on firearms and Second Amendment, I had one of our uh, NTC members, uh, Carlos, who is uh, interested in what is the process of attaining a firearms ID card. Um, firearms ID card is something that is uh, required in New Jersey and uh, other states also, but you know, obviously not all of them. And uh, basically, Carlos, it really depends. Uh, there should be one answer, and I wish that I could give you that answer, but the fact that we also live in the Republic of New Jersey uh, makes things much worse. I mean, we have one of the strictest uh, gun uh, gun laws or, or, or in the state, you know, as far as far as, uh, you know, New Jersey goes. Uh, we really can't carry concealed, you know, unless you're some kind of rich VIP or a politician, you know, so they're okay. But, you know, once again, hypocrisy, uh, you know, uh, dictates the game. But, uh, you know, I digress going back to your question. What it should be is uh, you go down to your local uh, police department and you pick up an application and you fill out the application uh, on that application. There should be at least, I think, uh, two uh, uh, not witnesses, but uh, like testimonies. Right. Basically, two people that are going to say, yeah, he's good to go. You know, he's not a psycho and blah, 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 blah. You know, I think he should be fine to, uh, you know be able to exercise his right as an American, right? So that's kind of how it works in Jersey. So then basically you send in that information. They uh, verify, let's say it goes to the state trooper level now, right? So you're just dealing really with your local office. And now that paperwork gets sent over to uh, the uh, state troopers, right? Uh, they go ahead and do a, a background investigation on you and also check out the, the two witnesses that uh or, or you know get the testimony from them usually they'll call up and say hey what's going on does this guy get to go you know they'll ask you three or four standard questions say thank you very much and uh, take it from there uh once that's kind of approved they'll send you out to get your fingerprints and you used to be able to get them done you know manually now everything's digitally uh and that'll end up costing you whatever 75 bucks 70 bucks i'm not really positive uh, so once again, you know, there's just an expense involved uh, with your fingerprints when it comes to getting your actual application. There's a fee for that also with your local uh, 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 state department or local, um, you know, township. Uh, but it's it's nominal. It's, you know, whatever, two, four bucks, something like that uh, per application. <clears throat> now, what ends up happening is within 30 days, you should be able to get your firearms ID or your FID card, uh, basically stating that now you can go ahead and purchase firearms. But still not how it really works. 
what ends up happening is now when I first had gotten my uh, my uh, gun permit and I wasn't allowed to get one in the township that I lived in with which which was uh, Clark New Jersey once I got out of the Marine Corps they told me once I went to apply for my FID they told me that I was uh, too unstable I had to wait a few years you know me being a Marine used to taking orders you know was just like yes sir you know saluted them and walk right back out never really thought about it again uh, you know I had other measures let's say <laughs> right but that's how that went okay and then there's a lot of stories like that that if you uh look into the uh, jersey process and speak to people and get on some of these message boards or whatever you'd hear stories that you wouldn't even believe right so this is you know coming right from the horse's mouth you know me being the horse so now what ends up happening is you need to as you go and apply for that back in the day was only one uh, uh pistol permit that i was able to get at a time like every 30 days now i think it's like two um uh, you could get two at the same time, sometimes even three. Uh, so if you want to buy uh, multiple uh, pistols, you will have to go ahead down to your office every time, down to the police, local PD, and apply for another handgun purchasing permit. So with that FID that you just went through, not only do you need that, but you're going to need an application to buy however many pistols you want. I think the max is pretty much, I think two for every 90 days, uh, something like that, that I'm not a hundred percent positive with, but I know that you could pretty much buy two handguns right off the bat and, uh, they'll give you the permits for that. Now, after that, when you do want more handguns, once again, process starts all over again, you do have to go apply for an individual permit for each handgun that you want to own with your FID though, you can buy however many long guns that you want in New Jersey. So, uh, rifles, shotguns, that's unlimited, right? You could go technically and buy a hundred of them, um, you know, at one shot without having to buy, uh, get an extra, extra paperwork, right. And pay extra fees and wait extra time. Uh, but when it comes to handguns, it's uh, completely different. It's a one-off pretty much. One application, one handgun, and there's only certain amounts of handguns that you could own uh, within that time period, uh, as I discussed. So hopefully you got all that. And now, <laughs> on top of it, Carlos, you're going to have to add in some politics, right? You might have a really cool you know, officer, lieutenant, sergeant, whatever that's in charge. Uh, you might have uh, just a government employee you know, that's in charge of this process. And pretty much it really depends on them. You know, how seriously do they attack their job? And it also uh, depends on politics. Uh, the mayor in that town, the chief of police in that town, they might be pro Second Amendment, they might be against Second Amendment. So there's all the, those politics involved there. I wish that there was one answer that I could give you just like when I started this conversation. But unfortunately, Carlos, that's New Jersey. We'll be right back. Check out our training programs at kettlebellcombatives.com slash products. Here, we use the kettlebell to specifically train our combatives' conditioning and martial arts abilities. Get started with our easily downloadable digital products, and soon you will find yourself with attributes you didn't think you would obtain. So we're back. Uh, just other topic uh, that I wanted to uh, think about or talk about or even discuss is the fact that we have our uh, veterans that are seeking help and what ends up happening is as they get their uh, treatment, so to speak, they're starting to get on the uh, confiscation list where now it's kind of like, okay, well, we're putting you on these drugs or we're putting you on this or we're putting you on whatever, but we're also going to take your Second Amendment rights away. So now they're scaring the shit out of veterans because these guys are just like, man, we have enough issues. You know, we're not causing any issues. We've been through enough. And, you know, if anybody deserves this right, it's us. And we're also smart enough to know what it's like to be disarmed from all of these other countries that we'd have to go and defend. Right. So you have all of this going. And, and what do you have? You know, what's going on? I mean, we I already kind of briefly went over, you know, speaking about uh, Obama and what his biggest uh, regret, you know, during his presidency was we have Hillary you know, running down that same exact uh, path, right? And people are cheering about it, you know, and, and all of this other stuff. And I'm just like, you know, just kind of thinking like, what, what's going on here? And it, it just reminds me of like, just so many things that, that are going on where we're basically, um, you know, treating the symptom, never the cause, you know, so people have mental, mental issues. This guy goes and does some shit, grabs a gun, you know what I mean? Kills people, tragedy, awful, you know, the whole nine yards, but it's the gun's fault. And it, I mean, to me, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? So it's always like, hey, let's keep treating, you know, that symptom. Uh, same thing with our food industry, right? Or, or with, I'm sorry, with our with our healthcare. You know, it's always like treat the symptoms, never the cure. You know, why? Because there's no freaking money in the cure, right? The money is in keeping people sick, you know, that way my mother could have and my dad could have, you know, a, a freaking medicine cabinet that, that looks like, you know, they're, they're the... Uh, 
the the medicine department you know at target or something like that it's just ridiculous and i'm like you know my grandparents never went through this you know they might have had a bottle of this or a bottle of that you know but not just this assortment of just craziness you know and it just everything with our food system whatever but you know once again i don't even want to get into that because then i'll be getting off topic but the same thing that kind of holds true is the treat the symptom you know not the cause and i mean i just really feel that the the country is you know smarter than that you know but but you turn on a TV and it's just like, you know, I really can't believe, you know, what, what's going on here, you know? And it's just like, and then, and then everybody wants their free, the same, same hypocrites kind of, you know, or harping on their freedom of speech and harping on, I want this and I want that and all this other stuff. And it's just like you idiots. If you just took like two or three minutes and realized that the second amendment is really what's protecting all the other rights. Because what are you going to do? Where's your free speech going to be if there's nobody there to back it up? You know, if things go awry with the government or with whatever, I could give you a million different scenarios, right? And it's not even a scary tactic. It's just like, turn on the channel. It's happening in all these other countries. And what are we bulletproof, you know, or what are we, you know, made of different humans? No, absolutely not. You know, it's all about politics. And at any coin flip, you know, throughout the game, things can change, you know, but it's always nice to know that I have those tools that no matter what happens or who's in office, I can do something to protect protect my family, to protect the people I care about, to protect my tribe, you know, and everybody else, or, or, or not everybody else, they, luckily there are millions, you know, that see things the way that I do. Um, and, but when, when it comes to, you know, you turn on the TV or whatever, depending, of course, on what network you're tuning into, of course, it's going to seem always seem one sided, whether it's one way or the other, you know, it's the political game that everybody plays. Um, but it, it, it's just that theory of, you know, get rid of this and get rid of that. And guns are so evil and guns are so awful. And I'm just like, you know, the only reason that you're really able to say that if you just kind of strip everything away, you know, is because there are millions of gun owners in America, you know, that if somebody just tried to take that little right from you saying the stupid shit that you just said, you know, you would, they would have your back. Even if they don't agree with you, they would have your back. And, uh, I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I still just don't have a grasp on, on politics, but you know, when you do start peeling away the layers and, and looking back at, uh, you know, what's actually happening, it's, it's a scary thing, you know, because you start seeing it in multiple, uh, industries and multiple, you know, like I brought up before, you know, not only is it in politics, but it's also in healthcare and it's, you know, and then you even look at the wars, you know, it's just like, you know, that that's, you know, once again, treating the symptoms, treating the symptoms, never the cure, because you no know, the cure would be peace and there's no money in peace, you know? So once again, we have to keep feeding the machine and, uh, you know, creating all of these, uh, symptoms, so to speak. And, uh, on that note, I'm going to take a short break. To get exclusive access to our instructors and members, join our online tribe at naturaltrainingcenter.com slash membership. Get your questions answered and interact with the coaches, experienced members, or with people who are just getting started. Start your training in fitness, combatives, and preparedness skills right now without having to set foot in a gym. One thing that I harp on often uh almost continually uh for for many pa facets of uh, of the ntc method but especially when it comes to firearms is training in safety uh it when uh, members ask me you know what should i invest and what type of ar-15 should i buy or what type of pistol or what type whatever i always think about budget and i always try to explain to them listen spend the majority of that on your training on your safety on your education right whatever's left over buy whatever you could afford, you know, cause it's just going to be the first one. You can always buy more. Luckily, hopefully it continues, but you know, you could always buy more, all that other stuff, but your education, your safety is something that <laughs> you might not be able to extend that. If, uh, you know, if you go out there unprepared, whatever the case may be, or even stay in unprepared, uh, because, uh, you're, you're not trained. You don't have the education that you need to operate that tool. You know, you're not going to go use a table saw and you have no idea where the, uh, the safety stop is or, you know, or where to plug it in or how to change the blade on it. Right. So, you know, imagine a firearm, you know, that could cause damage too. once again, just the tool, you know, when it's used properly, no problem, but that's the issue used properly. So all of the stuff that I've been discussing during this podcast in the way that the outside world or the anti uh, firearm, you know, or gun control lobby or whatever you want to say, they're always looking for reasons, 
right? And, and all this other stuff, which, and that's why I don't agree, agree with things when you have, you know, people putting uh, AR 15s on their back and walking into Target and things like that. It's like, why? You know, why do you have to give these people, you know, more of a reason, you know, to point fingers and say, see? You know, and it's just like, you know, sometimes they don't think, sometimes I think they're hired, you know, by these anti-gun lobbies. And that's why they're doing this stupid shit because there's really, you know, no other reason, you know, uh, or it's taken out of context or something, you know, because they just came off. I don't know. There's really no reason for that. So, dudes, don't don't strap shit on your back and walk around, you know, department stores, you know, no matter how legal or whatever the case may be, because it's just just not conveying the right message. Uh, You know, you're not looking cool. You know, you're not doing anything for the Second Amendment cause. If anything, you're doing the complete opposite. All right. So once again, going back to uh, to the training aspect of things, you're representing. Right. So you're representing this gun community that everybody wants to throw under the bus. The last thing that you want to do is be ill informed or, you know, under trained. And you might be the representation. Right. You could you might be able to have an effect on this person, you know, and say, well, man, you know, I can't stand all these you know gun nuts that I see on tv and you know i want to fight against that and join every cause that's going to go against that but if you can be you know if they say well you know what though i know helder and helder's pretty cool you know what and he's into guns and he's even an instructor and all that other stuff but you know he's he's not like that he's not some weirdo he's somebody i can trust he's somebody that i know is educated you know he's somebody that i know is passionate he's not going to sit there and and try and fight me because i'm speaking bad about you know firearms or guns or whatever they want to call it you know, those are the things that you have to be. We're almost ambassadors is really what's going on for the gun community. And the more that you're going to just want to butt heads and, you know, and just, you know, start cursing, oh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, because, you know, somebody's has a different opinion than you, then you know what? You're kind of part of the problem, too. You know, I'm not saying you're going to go hang out with that person maybe afterwards. I'm not saying to make that person part of your tribe, you know, but I'm also saying you got to be a little bit more diplomatic about it, you know, because who's to say that there's other things that you're ignorant on, right? Just like this person's ignorant on firearms, but you certainly don't want somebody shoving shit down your throat, you know, and making you feel stupid, you know, as they're trying to educate you, right? Or maybe you were trying to educate yourself, you know, so always keep that in mind. You know, no matter what you're doing, you know, you're sitting there representing uh, in, in training, education, you know, and just practice, 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 proper practice, perfect practice is going to get you where you need to be. And it has to be continual. You know, it's one of those things that will diminish on you if you don't keep practicing. So you can't say, well, you know, I was in the Marine Corps 10 years ago or I was in the Army 10 years ago and I shot once a week and whatever. So I have those skills. No, you had those skills past tense. All right. So keep that in mind. Um uh, bringing up a story, I was at the range this past weekend. I was with one of our uh, tribe members, uh, Paul, and uh, my wife. And, uh, you know, we went shooting. They wanted to go shoot. And I said, yeah, sure, fine. Let's go down to the range or whatever. So, you know, grabbed our tools and, uh, you know, did everything the right way. So everything was Jersey legal and, uh, you know, headed off to the range. Uh, we get to the range or whatever, you know, and set everything up. You know, it just happened now, you know, whatever, I got to shoot, Paul got to shoot, my wife shooting. So she happened to be shooting at this time, and we hear a uh, a shotgun going off. So there's this guy in the port, about two ports away from my wife with a shotgun, a 12-gauge, and he's firing away, you know, making all the noise in the world, whatever, whatever makes you happy, right? So he's sitting there firing a 12-gauge in a 25-yard, you know, indoor range. So, uh, but, you know, whatever, hey, man, maybe he needs to sight it in. It is Jersey. We're very limited, right? So you got to have all these other things, you know, and whatever, you know what I mean? Maybe he's working on his, you know, certification or, or whatever, shotgun course or whatever the case may be. So, you know, I don't care. It was legal, whatever. The one thing that was, uh, that I did have an issue with was the fact that he ended up turning around once he was done shooting and pretty much swept everybody behind him, including me and Paul, right? Now, luckily, uh, no, well, not luckily, well, uh, yeah, luckily, all right? And because of what I'm about to say, there wasn't really anybody looking. Only people that saw were me and Paul, you know, I, of course, had to go call out this individual on it and, and let them know, you know, that we had some issues and what to do and what not to do, right? But nobody else was looking. But what if it were other people at the range? It's their first time, right? And we already have those connotations and everything that we were speaking about. So finally, let's say you were able to drag your sister, your wife, right? A friend that's really anti-gun or whatever the case may be. But because of their credibility with you, they decided to take that trip and be like, all right, man, what's this all about? You know, he really wants me to go. Let me have respect for this person, obviously. So they showed up and now they experienced something like that, right? Like there's already all the other, all the other, you know, messed up shit that you say, you see at most ranges, right? And, and I don't care what state you're in. But 
to experience something like that that would you know here here's a, a, the barrel of, of a gun you know of a big gun a loud gun that they just heard go off you know and then of course they're not exposed to this so they're still trembling uh, trembling you know every time somebody you know squeezes out around um and especially on on a 12 gauge right making all that noise so all that fear whatever now here's this barrel that just happens to point right at their head you know as this idiot is you know casing um you know his, his weapon instead of casing it you know on the line which is the legal way to do it now of course the rso that was in there was about 90 years old so he's clueless not even paying attention and uh you know so i had to step in there and do his job which i am an rso but i wasn't getting paid to be an rso i was actually paying to be at this range uh but once again my whole point is we're 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 ambassadors right everything that we're doing people know we're gun guys right they're going to see what we post on facebook you know they're going to see what we like on facebook what people tag us in on facebook and if you're a person that's in the firearms most likely the people that are friends with you are going to be into firearms too and going to see what you post and what you like and all that other good stuff and what you comment on you know now this is uh once again you're you're the ambassador right you know, they're your friends for whatever other reason, obviously not because of firearms, because if they're anti 2A and you're pro 2A, you know, then that's that's not what you really have in, uh, as your common, uh, you know, your com common uh, watering hole conversation, right? So that's obvious. But there's something else in common there, right? So you want to put your best foot forward. You want to show these people, look how easy, look how great this is, look how much fun this could be, you know, and look how important it is for your family safety, you know, no matter who you are. And you want to be able to convey that, but you need to have uh, some credibility, right? So watch what you post, watch how you act, watch all of this. And once again, it goes right back to um, the training aspect of it. You know, it's, it's, it's um, the more that you're doing the perfect practice, the more that you're around professionals, you know, that have been there and done that and gained all of this experience, the more that that rubs off on you, right? Just like anything else. That's why I have natural training centers uh, membership, right? Because these are my like-minded people. These are people that I want to bounce stuff off of. These are people I want to interact with because they see things very similarly to the way that I do. You know, so that's important. But then, so with them, it's not, it's, it's a lot easier, you know, but now on the outside and especially trying to convince somebody of something that they're not really into, you know, now you have your, um, you know, job, uh, basically, um, you know, cut out for you. Right. Uh, now you have to also understand you're not there to appease everybody. Right. You know, I'm talking about the people that you really care about, you know, that you do want to come into your tribe, you know, because it's, a, uh, it's, a, uh, you know, somebody that you want to be there if shit were to hit the fan right you want them to be on the other side of the shit hit the fan situation you know or scenario so you want to keep that in mind right but uh you know there's also something that you need to think about and is is did uh sheep enjoy uh their cozy wool right so don't expect anyone to just uh, give you the time of day and it's unfortunately because it might be somebody that you really care about, you know, but you have to really think, you know, if they choose not to do uh, to join your cause or passion. Right. Uh, sometimes they just did you a favor. Right. I know it's harsh. Right. But it's also one less anchor that you need to carry around in a shit hit the fan scenario. Right. Or situation. You know, I, I know it sounds horrible. Right. But just remember, in emergency t situations, there are no fairy tales, you know, and I hope you understand uh you know, my meaning behind that, uh, you know, I speak this way because of the passion that I have, because I, I, you know, I've been there. I have certain experiences that, um, many people out there have not and got to see things that sometimes I wish I could unsee. Right. But it made me smarter. Uh, it made me clever in certain ways. Um, and it also made me realize that I need to train and need to train often. I need to diversify training. And, uh, you know, that led into my passion of, of starting natural training center, and more and more, you know, especially as, as members come on board, it's that, you know, it, it's more of that passion that comes out because it's just like, wow, you know, everybody else that comes in, giving me their energy, you know, just makes it say like, Hey man, you know, you have something here. Other people are, are, are seeing what you're seeing and helping you with your cause and helping you with your mission. And, you know, life just becomes so much more fun, you know, cause it's not a bunch of freaks. You know what I mean? We have all walks of life and everybody else and some, some really smart people, you know? So it's kind of cool to, to have that diversity and know that I have that. So I, I am very fortunate. And when I try to bring others into it, uh, whether it's the philosophy or whether it's actually to become a member, you know, that's where that harshness comes in. 
because it's kind of like, listen, I'm here for you now, you know, so that we could grow together, learn together, put the resources together that we need and train together, you know, but certainly don't come up to me, you know, on the other end of an emergency situation and say, hey, I'm here, you know, because now you really are an anchor, right? Now you're just a liability. And if I lead with my heart, you know, I might let the people down that have been investing in, in, in us, you know, and in Natural Training Center the whole time and are good to go and prepared and whatever, you know, is it really fair to them, you know, for me to say, hey, let me worry about this other person that didn't do shit, you know, no matter all the offerings and all the writings and all the the, the, the events that they could have taken part in, joining the online membership, you know, which is so minimal, you, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's ridiculous, you know, and they didn't even do that. And now you really think that, you know, we're going to be there for you, you know, and when I say we with natural training center, if you're not a natural training center member, you might belong to a different organization, or you might just be thinking about it very, very locally, like your just immediate family, you know, or your immediate neighbors, you know, so this is kind of stuff that you need to address now, you know, because some of you that have been through even temporary little just emergencies, you see how people freak the fuck out, you know, and if that's going to happen, you know, you need to address and think of this stuff now and how you're going to react when, when that doorbell does ring right and it's somebody like oh please uh, i didn't prepare shit but uh you know can i can i come in <laughs> uh well this concludes today's podcast and uh with all this other stuff that i just told you today and uh that you're going to digest uh i want you to stay motivated and be prepared thank you for listening get the show notes from this episode and all episodes on mtc radio go to naturaltrainingcenter.com forward slash n t c radio you can also get the information by going to our blog and clicking on the n t c radio category